Looking for a simple smart TV that isn't too pricey? Then stick around for our full review of Sony's 2021 entry-level 4K TV, the Sony X80J. It's a replacement of the X800H from 2020, which we'll be comparing it to to see whether it stacks up against its predecessor. Hi, I'm Daigo, a tester at ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. In this video, we're going to go through different aspects of the X80J. First, we'll look at the design of the TV and then move on to picture quality. We'll then look at motion handling, input lag, and sound quality before getting to our verdict. Before going over the test results, we'll talk about the different sizes first because there's some variations in the sizes. We bought and tested the 55 inch and it's also available in 43, 50, 65, and 75 inch sizes. However, our results only apply to the 43, 55, and 65 inch models because the 50 inch has a VA panel and as of now, we haven't been able to find any information about the type of panel that's on the 75 inch. If you purchase the 75 inch, let us know in the comments. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the link in the description below. In terms of design, the X80J looks almost identical to the X800H from 2020. It has the same chunky bezels, and it's relatively thin compared to other high-end TVs from this year. It's not the most elegant, but it's expected for an entry-level TV. The feet are white set, and there's no way to position them closer to accommodate smaller tables. Cable management is pretty basic. You'll get two clips to tie the cables to the feet. The back is exactly like the X800H, it's plastic and plain with all the inputs facing sideways. If you want to wall mount it, you need a VESA 300 times 300 mount. There are adapters included in the box. The overall build quality is decent. It's all plastic and relatively light. There's just one issue with our unit. There are small squares where the borders meet the screen at the bottom left side. That said, it is likely just an issue with our unit. One of the things that's new on the X80J is that it now runs on Google TV, which replaces Android TV. It's very similar to Android TV, but with a different user interface. It's fairly easy to use, it runs smoothly, and we haven't had any issues with it so far. Unfortunately, there are ads and suggested contents here and there. You can't disable the ads, at least not through regular settings. If you absolutely want to remove them, you can learn more about that in our article about ads. You can still get your apps through the Google Play Store, which is enormous, so you shouldn't have any problems finding what you need. The remote control looks very similar to the one that came with the X800H, with just some small changes to the quick access buttons. They've added buttons for YouTube, Prime Video, and Disney+, Plus, but removed Google Play Movie and TV because Google is shutting down that app. For full functionality, the remote needs to be connected to the TV via Bluetooth. There's a dedicated Google Assistant button, and you can change inputs, open apps, complete searches, and adjust certain settings through voice commands. You can also calibrate the speakers of the TV via the acoustic calibration feature using the mic of the remote. There's only one physical button on the TV, and it's just below the Sony branding on the front. You can press to move or hold to choose highlighted items. It lets you perform basic functions like turn the TV on off, change the channel, the input, and adjust the volume. Now let's move on to picture quality. We'll mainly be comparing to 2020's X800H to see what the differences are. For an update comparison with the new models as we buy and test them, see the review page on our website, which is linked below. As we mentioned earlier, except for the 50 inch and possibly the 75 inch, the X80J is using an ADS panel. And like IPS panels, it has a mediocre contrast of 1116 to one, which is the same ballpark as the X800H. This means that blacks appear gray when watching in a dark room. Unfortunately, there's no local dimming to improve the contrast. Now, let's talk about brightness in standard dynamic range because this is one of the things that changed the most from the X800H. First, it's not as bright overall. We're talking a draw for 450 nits to 335 nits in real scene brightness. 350 nits should be enough to combat glare in most lighting conditions, but it might not be well enough if you're in a very well lit room with plenty of sunlight. On top of that, there's now some frame dimming in the 2% windows, which means that small objects in dark scenes may appear dimmer. It's the same story in HDR when it comes to brightness. We measured 366 nits with our real scene test, which is a significant drop from the X800H 504 nits, and not bright enough for even the most basic form of HDR. It's a bit brighter when using our slides and test patterns, but just like in SDR, there's some frame dimming in the 2% windows. The HDR brightness in game mode is virtually identical, so you shouldn't see any differences in or out of game mode. Moving on to screen uniformity. The gray uniformity is good. With our 50% gray slide, you can see that the corners are darker on our unit, 
and there's some dirty screen effect or DSE in the middle, which can be distracting when watching sports or contents with large areas of uniform color. As for black uniformity, it's a bit subpar. The screen looks blue and there's clouding throughout, along with some black light bleed. Keep in mind though, that uniformity varies between individual units, so yours might look completely different from ours. One of the main advantages of an IPS panel TV is that they generally have a wide viewing angle, and that's the case here with the X80J. They're not as good as the X800H, but good enough for most people. This means that the images will look accurate when viewing from the side. As for reflection handling, it's decent. It struggles a bit with direct reflections, so it's best to avoid placing it opposite to a window or bright lights. One area that the X80J has improved over the X800H is out-of-the-box accuracy. Although this may also vary between units, the color inaccuracies are very minor and shouldn't be visible to the naked eye, and the same goes for the white balance. The only thing is that the gamma is closer to 2.3, so most scenes appear darker. When it comes to the color gamut, not much has changed from the X800H, which is to say, it's good. It has excellent DCI-P3 coverage, the color space used in most HDR content. This means that the TV can display a wider range of colors for a more detailed picture. However, this is still an IPS-like TV with a low contrast ratio, so it doesn't display dark colors all that well. It also has trouble with bright colors because it is very limited in its HDR peak brightness. Gradient handling is excellent. There's some very minor banding in the grays, reds, and greens, but it shouldn't be noticeable in most content. Gradient handling is more important for HDR, especially in larger areas where the color changes gradually, like the sky. By the way, before we speak about motion, if you enjoy our content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for our latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. By subscribing, you are helping us reach a wider audience and in turn, help us help you find all the best products for your needs. So let's talk about motion, starting with the response time. The response time is how fast the pixel can change from one color to another. So a TV with a slow response time will have more motion blur than a TV with faster response time. The X80J performs well in this regard. It's a bit faster than the X800H in the total response time, but overall, it is very similar. There's still some overshoot in the 0-20% to transitions, which might cause some inverse ghosting in dark scenes, but again, it's very minor. One of the things carried over from the X800H is the flicker-free backlight. This is great because most TVs on the market flicker to dim the backlight, and depending on the frequency, the flickering can be bothersome to some people and cause eye strains. The X80J have backlight strobing feature to improve motion clarity otherwise known as black frame insertion, but it flickers at 120Hz and 60Hz content, so it may cause image duplication. BFI also causes a drop in overall brightness and might bother some people. If you like the soap opera effect, the X80J can interpolate low frame rate content up to 60Hz to make motion appear smoother. It struggles to keep up when there's a lot of movement though. We saw a lot of motion artifact, including some haloing around heads. So, because the X80J has a fast response time, there's a bit of a stutter in the low frame rate content like movies since all frames are held longer. If it really bothers you, you can also try to turn on motion interpolation. As for Judder, it can remove it from native 24p content only. Judder makes the camera movement look like it's stuttering, which is the result of mismatch between the frequency of the content and the TV's refresh rate. It's only important when watching movies and it's most noticeable in panning shots. The X80J can smooth out judder in 60p and 60i content if you set the Cinemotion to high and motion float to max, but it does not completely remove it. For the last part of motion, let's look at the refresh rate and variable refresh rate support. Obviously, this is an entry level 4K TV, so we're talking about basic 60Hz refresh rate. It shouldn't be a problem for most people, but it might be a bit disappointing for gamers with new consoles like the PS5 or Xbox Series X. Unfortunately, there's also no VRR support to help reduce screen tearing. Now, even though the X80J has a 60Hz refresh rate and no VRR support, it still has an incredibly low input lag for a responsive gaming experience, as long as you are in game mode or graphic picture mode. This is also great if you want to use it as a PC monitor. It supports most common resolutions, but you need to force a custom resolution for 1440p. It can also do proper chroma 444, which helps with text clarity, but again, not in 1440p. If you want to use chroma subsampling, make sure to be in the game mode or graphics picture mode with the enhanced format setting enabled for the input in use. If you're looking for a TV for a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, then the X80J is not the best choice. It has no HDMI 2.1 ports and as we mentioned, it has a 60Hz refresh rate and no VRR support. It can do 4K at 60Hz with 10-bit HDR though. For inputs, 
The X80J has four HDMIs, two USBs, a digital optical out, a 3.5 analog audio out, an Ethernet port, a port to plug in an IR blaster, and a composite in, which requires an adapter, but it is not included. There's eARC support on HDMI 3, even though it doesn't support HDMI 2.1. This lets you pass high quality, uncompressed audio to an external home theater system or soundbar over HDMI. In the same vein, let's talk about the sound quality of the built-in speakers. They sound decent and deliver a clear dialogue, but like most TVs, there's little to no bass extension, which means they can't reproduce a thumping, rumping sound. They get pretty loud, but there's a fair amount of compression artifact and distortion at max volume. That said, it depends on the content and some people may not hear it. So that's a review of the Sony X80J. Overall, it's very similar to the X800H. There's some slight improvement in terms of response time, and Google TV runs a bit smoother than Android TV. But the big drop in screen brightness is pretty disappointing. So far, we haven't reviewed any other 2021 entry-level TVs like the Sony X80J. The closest comparison is a Q60A QLED, which is similar in features, but with a VA panel. Obviously, the Samsung is better suited for dark rooms because it has a much better contrast ratio, but it has much lower response time than the X80J. So that's it. What do you think of the Sony X80J? Is the X80J going to be on your must-buy list? Let us know below. Also, we're a growing company and we are expanding in other product categories. As a result, we are currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at our career page on our website. As always, you can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.